How's it going, everybody? It's Dave Meltzer here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez here as well, and uh, we'll be running down. We had a, quite a weekend of wrestling news. And, uh, Brian, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. That's good. Um, I guess the first thing we should start with is uh, last night's pay-per-view. And uh, what were your thoughts? I thought last night's pay-per-view was so awesome. I mean, the four-way was great. The... Uh... The uh, three fall best of three falls match with Hunter and Austin was great. The main event was great, except for the uh, run in by the Big Show. And I think that uh, I hated it. Everybody I was watching hated it. Um, everybody Everyone emailed, I talked to hated it. it. <laughs> I think Rock and uh, Angle hated it. I think that every fan watched. I'm sure that referee it. didn't like it either. Yeah, the referee was killed. Um, I think the best part was when the referee was being carried to the back by the two other referees, and Earl Hebner noted that. Uh, Angle's making yeah, a cover, so he just dropped the referee that he was carrying to run back in and make the count. That and, was pretty uh, funny. That was pretty funny, but you know when I watched that, I was cracking up, but it, it kind of took the edge off of the, the intensity of the match for about the next 90 seconds. Oh, that whole run-in and the music playing and everything just, I thought, why, what is the point of this? I mean, if you're going to put him in the uh, world title hunt, then why give him the hardcore title? And uh, oh, even okay, if you're going to put him in the world okay, title okay, hunt, okay, why have him run in? Wh okay, but why... At this point, should he be in the world title hunt? Okay, everything should be focused towards WrestleMania. And, you know, I mean, it's one thing its one thing for Helmsley to be in the world title hunt. But for, well, you don't need, what do we need, a fourth guy and do another four-way like last year? Yeah. You know, and, and I'm sure they're not, but I just think that, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm presuming that they'll probably... Do something with a Rock and Big Show, like on TV tonight, or maybe in a week or so. Just you know, just to set up a match. But if they were going to do that, they could have done it like with an angle on uh, on uh, you know, like on Raw before the show or something. Yeah. You know, like in that early 30 minute interview segment. And they did the uh, Hunter and Austin with Hunter winning two of the three matches. So I guess he has. Um, I actually think that was better than if um, Austin had won both because, I mean, if Austin won the series and then he wins a title. Like what does Hunter have? Did he just beat Austin once? No, I thought that, I thought I thought it would have worked either way. As long as if if Hunter would have beaten him clean in the wrestling match, and then like uh, Austin would have won the street fight, and then they did some sort of a fluky thing, you know, where one of those, you know, one of the things. I mean, I expected the cage to be one of those over the top and out things, which means that either guy could have won and it would have been okay. They would have had a gripe um, to do that pin the way it was. I mean, I think it's it's good because, you know, I think the way they're going to hype it on television is that Hunter beat Austin in two straight falls, you know, after losing the first. Mm -hmm. And right now, well, I shouldn't say right now, as of last night, the plan was still Austin and Rock uh, in a single match for WrestleMania. But uh, I was also told that uh, it could change. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking last night, you know, they did the, um, I think it was, was it WrestleMania? What well, WrestleMania was that with uh, Luger and Brett? Luke I don't Brett know the number. I, I don't know the number, but it was um. No, that was. was I was kind of thinking they could do something like that, where it would be a three-way match. Square Garden WrestleMania ten. Match. WrestleMania ten, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, so it would be like uh, Hunter and Austin in the opener, but then I realized that Hunter will never work the opener at WrestleMania, so that plan is out the window. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Then, the, then, and then the fourth guy throw an angle. Because right now they kind of don't have anything. Because what I was so, sort of told was, there's not. A, a big plan right now for Angle or Helmsley mm -hmm. um, for WrestleMania because I think they're going to go with Ben Juan Eddie Guerrero. Uh, yeah. I don't know that for sure, but that's kind of the impression that I was given. So, you know, um, what was going to say the um, the uh, oh gosh, I'm losing my train of thought here. The, <laughs> so they could go against each other in some sort of a, of, a, of a number one contenders match. In which case, Helmsley could beat Angle. That way, Helmsley's on total roll, you know, having beaten Austin and beaten Angle, since it pays him back for doing that last job to Angle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sets up uh, Helmsley as the number one contender for Austin, which is obviously where they're going to go over the summer. Yeah. And, I mean, the way I was looking at it last night, you know, you were talking the other day about, you know, why do three stipulation matches on one show, because then what do you have for the summer? But, you know, they already have now a street fight that Hunter won and a cage match that Hunter won. So they could really do two pay-per-views out of that. Just have one main event be a street fight and have Hunter go, I, hey, I beat you. Well, I'll no, they can, do a, they, can, they can do a regular match, a street fight, and a cage match at, at SummerSlam. You know, like build it, you know. They can you mean all, all three again? No, 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 one at a time. Or, or they could do something where you do uh, at the house shows. Let's say they do a regular match on, say, the Backlash pay-per-view, okay? Mm -hmm. Then uh, after that, 
they can do some go go in some other direction and then go house shows with street fights everywhere because I don't know if I want to see them in three pay per view main events over the summer and then come back with the cage. I have a feeling you will though. <laughs> <laughs> and then come back with a cage match at SummerSlam. Yeah. At which point Rock can jump back in the picture. Yeah. Or or when Rock jumps back in the picture. They're you know they they've got a lot of stuff. I just don't want to see Big Show in that picture, but I don't he is. I mean um, I think I liked. Um, I mean I thought the main event was awesome, but they always have an awesome match. And I think I actually liked uh, the four way better than you did because I think it was better in the main event, just because it was like. I, I maybe it wasn't as good a match as the main event, but to do a four way match. And have it be so awesome and not turn into a cluster. That was like as big a miracle to me as the women's match. Yeah, the women's match was a miracle. That show was was great. The um, I mean, I thought Hunter did a phenomenal job. I I'm not so sure that you know when that thing was over, I thought that maybe okay, I thought maybe the third best wrestler in that company, um, and in, and inside the ring maybe even the second best is now Angle. Uh huh. After that match with Brock, I mean because I'd say Benoit Benoit being the best. Because um, with Helmsley, and, and Helmsley put on an incredible performance. They went 40 minutes, and it was never boring or any, anything like that. It was very close, you know. I mean, it was probably, I don't know, what would you say was better, this or Hell in the Cell? Because I thought they are both... I think this was better Hell in the Cell. Okay, I mean, it was, a, it was a match of the year caliber match, without a doubt. Um, but with, with the one thing when you notice with the Helmsley match is compared to the Angle match. In the Helmsley match... Um, and in all of Helmsley's matches, and this is not meant as a knock on Helmsley, but but they have he's, he has a lot more latitude in what he can do because of the type of match and the positioning of the match. Even though Angle went on last, in that they can use the tables, they can use the blade, they use a lot of foreign objects. Whereas Angle's matches, generally speaking, there have been exceptions, but like last night, um, I mean that was a match where basically him and Rock were doing wrestling. Yeah. And I mean they they weren't doing objects, they were doing the near falls, and it's a harder match in the United States to get over. And I thought they did, you know, an incredible job. Brock did very good, but um, I mean, I, I watching that, I just thought Angle the way, the way he sold that uh, sharpshooter spot early on, mm -hmm. and then you know his execution of all of the the moves, um, except for that thing. What was the deal with the finish? You know, the the first. That's Rock what I'd like he, to know too. I think he forgot to kick out. I think he was supposed to kick out. I mean, it wasn't that that for sure wasn't supposed to be the finish. It was supposed to be two rock bottoms, and I think that. Either that or he was supposed to roll the shoulder and didn't roll it quick enough. It was very... Well, well, I think they had the shot from the hard camera. So if he would have just, like, barely rolled, like, his left shoulder, we wouldn't have seen it. But the fact right that all shoulder. the fans thought that it was the finish means that the people on the other side didn't see it either. So I don't think he kicked I think, out. I think he forgot to kick out. Yeah, but other than that, that was a hell of a match. Yeah. Quite a weekend of pay-per-views. You didn't see the UFC, did you? No, no. That was a that was a hell of a show too, uh, very impressive. Uh, now what happened in the main event? Because a friend of mine saw the show and I said, you know, how was the UFC? And he goes, I hated it. I said, why? Really? He goes, he goes, Tito Ortiz used an illegal hold or an illegal move. And I said, what do you do? He goes, a headbutt. And I'm sitting here reading all these reports and I didn't see a headbutt anywhere. So I don't know if he was watching. Okay, it was the show not. Or... Okay, here's the deal. Okay, it was, it was not an illegal move. But what he did was he. He basically did a belly-to-belly -belly suplex on Evan Tanner. And the impact, and, and most people did miss the headbutt, but it wasn't really a headbutt. On the impact, what happened was his the top of Tito's head smashed the jaw of Evan Tanner at the same time the back of Evan Tanner's head hit the mat. So he was crushed on both sides, and he was knocked unconscious for 35 to 45 seconds. Wow. And that was it. Um, Tito threw in so the next... Hurt. It wasn't a headbutt, but the head, the head did strike the chin... On impact on the mat, mm -hmm. so it's not an illegal move, but um, it is. I think the combination of both. Everybody was saying there that it was the the back of the head hitting the mat that knocked him out, but I think it was a combination of the head jamming the head into the mat and then the mat not having enough give. And yeah, um, yeah. I mean, in in that sense, I mean, I was disappointed the main event only went 29 seconds, um, <laughs> but it was Hurt. the the, the uh, match with Pedro Hizo and Josh Barnett was. Um, Incredible, incredible match, um, and uh, I thought in Caro Uno and Jens Pulver had a, had a really good match, and just the whole atmosphere. It was, believe me, it was like night and day. This UFC compared to others. I didn't get to judge though. Didn't they have um, laser light shows for like the main eventers and everything? Yeah, they had a really good ring entrance for Tito Ortiz. It was, um, you know, just in yeah, laser lights and the pyro. Um, you know, these the Zufa, you know, and the Fertitas. 
they only bought the company five weeks ago, and so, you know, a lot of the changes that are going to happen are slow, but, um, I mean, it was just the whole atmosphere there, and the fact that these guys are, these guys clearly have a totally different tact as Bob Meyer was, and in, in, in as far as what to do, you know, Bob Meyer was, I think, his whole thing was to, you know, cut the budget back as much as possible and kind of limp along until you're back on pay-per-view, and these guys are just like, we're going to put on these great shows, and, and, we're going to create this demand and have people get mad at their cable companies for not being able to see it. Good luck, buddy. I know. Well, but the thing is, is that he's, you know, Myrowitz had a lot of had had some enemies in that he's that he that had been made, which made it very difficult for the pay per view companies to reverse themselves. Mm -hmm. And these guys, you know, it's a fresh start, and these guys are going to try to market it as you know hard as a sport. I don't know if they can do it, uh, but you know, one of the things. That I know that they want to do. I don't know is is get a weekly television show with the idea that the weekly television show would then build up the pay per views. Traditional, you know, similar to wrestling. In fact, there's a lot of pro wrestling ideas. The show had a lot, you know, more, um, you know, they said they set up. I was wait, how is it? You know, set up future matches. They did a better job. I mean, WWF did a good job of setting up future matches last night. I think that UFC actually did a better job than WWF even as far as like getting these matches, like like our rematch with Shamrock and. Um, Tito, Tito Ortiz, and Kevin Randleman. Um, well, they have to, because they have no TV. Well, the whole idea is to get TV, build up these pay-per-views, like you would do pro wrestling, and then people would, you know, if they're watching the TV every week, and then they can't see the pay-per-view, they are going to be more apt to yell at their cable company. Yeah. And, and that is the way that the cable companies eventually will be responsive. Um, and plus, if they get sanctioning, you know, Fair Tito used to be a member of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. I was actually sitting right... Uh, behind um, uh, Dr. Flip Omansky, who's a, a member of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And, I mean, like, after every match, he was just jumping up and just going like, this is sport? Why would anyone... And this is a member of the commission. This is one of the guys who voted on it. This is ridiculous that this stuff, that anyone, like, bans this stuff. Yeah. So they got a real advocate there. Um, and, you know, once they're in, you know, in, in Vegas and, at, at, you know, in New Jersey, I don't know, it gives them a lot of... Uh, Credibility as far as as far as that goes. Um, I don't mean I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to bring, but everybody was very very enthusiastic. And they had a packed house in uh, in Atlantic City, you know, five thousand people. And um, I mean, going back to that promotion real quick, I think it's something that e ECW should have done when they were doing their pay per views because it was like they had this TV. I guess with TNN it was such a big deal because it was national. But I mean, once they lost TNN, it's like you know they have this TV, but it's hardcore TV, and not everybody gets it. And to do a pay-per-view and to finish the pay-per-view and only tell people when the next show is and not really tell them, you know, what's going to be on it, it's like anybody that doesn't get hardcore TV is just like totally in the dark. Well, but, uh, there, there's, there's the counting on the Internet, but, you know, you just can't do a big buy rate based that. on Internet word around. No. Um, they're going to do Randy Couture and Pedro Hizzo, and the very next day Randy Couture got uh, a neck lock submission beaten by Valentin Overeem, and I think it was 56 seconds in the Rings King of Kings, which... Antonio Noguero won. And before we go on, I want to mention that I thought Friday's show was one of the funnest shows. In fact, I thought last week, last week was probably my favorite week, except we only did three shows, so I, maybe I shouldn't say that. But those three shows were, were I really, I really enjoyed Tuesday, and then Thursday with Bad News Allen, who's one of my favorite guests, and Friday, Bobby Heenan, if he was that good. I expected to be replaced after that show. <laughs> if Bobby Heenan was that good, he had never lost his job with Vince, and he had certainly never lost his job on Nitro. He had been he was phenomenal. Anyway, that was a Benny nice show. Yeah, Don Fry was great too. Yeah, he Frank was. Shamrock. Frank Shamrock was real good. Um, yeah, we're gonna try to get Don Fry back on again. He was very funny. Uh, let's see, XFL real quick. Hey, what do um, you think of uh, Tito digging the grave? I thought that it was a great idea, except not then. Yeah. Um, if if he had beaten him with like a submission hold, or or even you know like just a, there was a knockdown and or you know the fight was stopped and Evan Tanner was fine, it's like showmanship. They're trying to give him like character and like you know like like this is what he does after he wins his matches because this UFC is definitely built you know around Tito. But you know Evan Tanner at that moment was knocked out. They had like you know ten medics around him and they were about to put him on a stretcher and he's doing that. And no, I think that. I think in hindsight, if it was explained to him like that, I, I think that the whole idea was in his head, this is what I do when I win, because it's kind of that pro wrestling approach they're trying to take to get Tito over as this badass superstar, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin Killer. character. 
and I think that n he did it because you know he knew that that's what he was supposed to do, and not really thinking that you know this guy's really hurt, and 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 he's not unconscious, and there was there was definite concern, and then he's like shoveling this grave, you know, with him. That was no, it wasn't the right thing to do. Mm. So, yeah, no, but very bad, very bad. Um, I'm trying to think. Any um, anything else on on that stuff to talk about? I don't think so. Okay, the XFL Saturday night game. Which you, I'm sure you didn't watch that either. I missed it. Yeah. Um, that game. It was... Actually, let me tell you something though. After the match I had Saturday night, I would have preferred to have watched the XFL game. Why you had a bad match? Oh or... my god. Okay. Tell it me was me. the most horrible match I ever had. Really? Yeah. I just want to get. What that went out wrong? <laughs> everything. Everything that could go wrong could. And it did. <laughs> really? This poor guy had. Oh four no, matches. no, it, no! It didn't because if everything could have gone wrong, you'd end up like Sid. That is true. That is true. I mean, if you're unscathed, then you just had a bad match. I was not unscathed, unscathed psychologically, though. <laughs> what happened? I just say, um, I was wrestling this guy, and he had he had like four matches, and um, I mean, I tried. I just tried to idiot-proof the match, and it didn't work. I'll just leave it at that. So Trish Stratus outdid you. Oh my God, she did. I was so embarrassed <laughs> watching that show, going. Stephanie McMahon and Trish Stratus just um, uh, work rings around me. <laughs> hey, I mean, I, I think we really should give Trish Stratus a lot of credit for that match. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't the best match, and probably technically it was the worst match on the show. But I don't know if I would even say that though. Well, what, just... hardcore match, hardcore match was worse, maybe. Well, maybe you're right. No, but the um, when I, I maybe I Lawler didn't... and Richards was worse because it looked like Richards was like on a different planet for some of it. Yeah, it's like Waller, Waller really... standing there waiting for him to come at him and everything like that. And but I thought Waller was really good. No. Yeah, it's just that kind of reminds know, me I... of Saturday. But anyway, um, yeah, I thought they were just the one thing about that match was they were just they were just pummeling each other. I mean, with those slaps and with the uh, Trish Stratus at one point was just pounding her in the corner and just kicked her right in the head. And I thought these girls are really trying to have a hell of a match here, and they did for what it was. I mean, they... They must have practiced it, but I mean, to me, the idea, I was stunned that they were going to go more than three minutes. And then, you know, and I know that there were, there were a lot of people when they heard how long they were going to go. Boy, I mean, with the idea that, you know, it's not just going to be roll around for 30 seconds and a couple of quick spots. Um, you know, they were actually going to go and try to do a match, you know, with, with the amount of experience Stephanie McMahon has. And I mean, Stephanie McMahon has never looked good in the ring, ever. And Trish, you know, certainly doesn't have the experience to lead a match, but she did a hell of a job. Because she took, you know, almost all the bumps. Yeah. Um, like seven minutes or something. Eight and a half minutes. Eight and a half. And it was, it was. I mean, it was a pretty decent match. Yeah. It was better than most women's matches that we see in the United States. I would say almost all. I mean, that, as far as, um, yeah, I mean, the vast majority. I'm sure it blew away everything on that uh, WOW pay-per-view, and those women actually do more wrestling than, certainly than Stephanie. And, of course, they had Steve the Regal out there to uh, make the match even better. He was so awesome. Yeah, isn't he, though? I know. Putting, the, uh, putting uh, Stephanie on top and then, oh, my God, what the hell should I do? Put the foot on the rope. That was so great. I uh, want to make a real quick mention that uh, Booker T will be on WCW tonight, uh, returning. At least that was the plan as of yesterday. Um, WCW, uh, let's see. WCW, that's that sale to Fusions, ran into some major snags last week while while I was in Atlantic City, out of touch. But I think everything is okay now. Uh, there were some problems as far as, um, you know, the books just don't look too good. <laughs> and uh, it almost it almost fell through. Uh, also, Mandalay Sports uh, is backing a venture out of Calgary. Uh, it's going to be called MattRats.com. That's the idea of a television show, website. The idea is uh, that, that they would have teenage wrestlers, um, the big stars being Teddy Hart and Harry Smith, and they would fill uh, the audience with planted teenage girls who would go crazy over the guys and, you know, combine music and wrestling and, uh, you know, try to appeal to that teenage age group and syndicate the show nationally. So that's, uh, that's the idea. Behind you know, we actually had uh, two guys were working for us that um, ran off to Calgary to become part of Matt Rats. Oh, really? And, uh, haven't seen them since I heard from them. So. They, t they taped two pilots, I know that. Yeah. Um, I heard that, you know, the idea is to be based around doing outrageous high spots. You know, the kids doing great high spots. So 
I have not seen a tape of it, but um, probably we'll hear. I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about it being that it's in, in some Calgary. It's not not exactly the wrestling capital of the world, but for some reason, I, I kind of hear what happens in Calgary pretty quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell us about your judging, by the way. Do you want to hear the judging story? Yeah, we're going to start that story, and we never got into it. Okay. When, when we last left you on Friday, I had completed an arduous all those arduous tasks, including... Uh, I, but I don't even want to go into the long version of the story. I told Brian that before the show on Friday. But anyway, there was all these things I had to do, including getting an EKG, eye test, things like that. Blood eye test. Wasn't a bit. Blood test. I got the blood test here in San Jose, which was a story in and of itself, but I got it done. So anyway, Friday, right before the show. Did you have to do a weigh-in as well? Uh, yes, I did do a weigh-in as well. Really? As fact. And blood pressure, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did they have a this weight was... limit for the judges? No, I think that the weight wouldn't have mattered. Okay. So anyway, so then I, um, at about 3.30 their time, which is an hour and a half before the show, the blood test form comes in, and this was that was a comedy of errors, too, because I told the hospital, you know, to fax me the results of the blood test, you know, at, at uh, to the UFC office, um, and we never get it. So then... Uh, there, so then later, so this is later in the afternoon, I, I called them up again. I go, look, you know, I mean, we're on deadline. Please fax me this um, blood test. And they go, this is uh, Kaiser in San Jose. And they go, uh, we faxed you this so many times, and we're not going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, oh, nice. great. Um, so anyway, at a roughly the same time, my girlfriend calls up and goes, um, I made them fax it to me. So they had faxed, because they... they tried to fax it to, to the UFC office, and for some reason the UFC office, their fax machine wasn't working, but they didn't know it. That was like my fault because they weren't getting the fax. Uh, so anyway, so uh, my girlfriend has got a copy of this blood test. So they have, so, sh so she tries to fax it to the UFC office, and again it doesn't work, but she's smart enough to know that she faxes it to the hotel uh, instead of the UFC office. So anyway, they go down, and there's like five copies of the fax between the uh, Kaiser and two that my girlfriend sent, at the, ho at the uh, hotel lobby, you know, to be sent to the UFC offices, which nobody had brought to the UFC offices. So now they got five copies of my blood test. However, now, so, so anyway, then I go and do the show, figuring everything's cool. I, right after the show, I go to the arena, and the first thing I do is this guy named Skip Hall, who was scheduled to be one of the judges, comes up to me and just goes, I'm not going to be able to judge. He was telling me about it. He was, he was mad, and he's just swearing, and he's really upset, and he just goes, the commission, they said that um, even though, like, uh, my medical tests were all in, because they couldn't confirm that that was the signature of the doctor um, that signed the form, that they would not let him judge. And I go, you know what? I'll bet you that they're never going to be able to find my doctor either, and I'm not going to be able to judge. I was saying that as a joke. So, you know, I don't hear anything. A few minutes later, someone from UFC kind of walks by me and just kind of goes, you're not judging tonight. And I go, why not? And he goes, medical reasons. And I go, I'm fine. And then he just walked away. <laughs> Good. So, so I just figured it was the same story as the other guy. And my goal was because Skip Hall was so mad. And, and just I was going to be like an adult about it. That I went all the way to New Jersey. Didn't get, you know, not getting to judge. But what the hell? I'm seeing the show. We got to do two good Yada shows from there. I'm not, you know, it's not the end of the world. So I was like, I'm not going to get mad. I'm going to be, you know, just going just to watch the show and have fun. So a few minutes later, someone else from UFC comes up to me and just goes, We're sold out. What? You don't have a seat. No, 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 no. <laughs> they go, they go, they go um, what the hell happened? And I go, I don't know. You tell me. And he goes, we heard you were in trouble. You uh, forged a doctor's signature. You um, <laughs> failed your eye test. They start telling me this stuff. Now I'm all of a sudden going like, oh, what's going on? I mean, so, and I, I really, but I, I thought that, I actually thought when he said it that he was just kidding me. Um, at first, so someone else who's not with UFC but affiliated was sitting with me and goes, you know, you better do something. And I go, why? And he goes, because um, what everyone's saying about you, um, I mean, you better clear your name. So then all of a sudden I go, oh, my God. So I go to the, the woman at the athletic commission and I go, what's going on? And she just goes, um, oh, what is she? She, she basically says that, uh, first, first she says that uh, the doctor said it wasn't his signature on the form. Then she said that when we, we called up, I think I'm going to bury myself, but this is the truth. <laughs> anyway, that uh, when they called up to confirm the signature, 
that the number that I gave them for the hospital was the number of a fax machine and not of a, the hospital. Well, I knew that that's wrong. And then, so then, then they go, um, well, actually, we couldn't, um, we couldn't confirm the signature because we couldn't get an answer, which that one I believed, okay? So I go, so pretty much the show goes on. A couple people make some comments to me at the show. A couple people give me dirty looks at the show. Uh, so anyway, um, at the end of the show, someone from the commission comes up to me and just goes, you know, we're really sorry about what happened. It was this technicality. We know it wasn't your fault, and, um, you know, just clear everything up this week, and, you know, you can judge, you know, you can judge, we'll assign you to judge the next show. So I thought, okay, everything's cool, and that's fine. So I didn't really think about it again. I thought they were actually being pretty cool about it. So I come home to see the facts that were sent from my house, and there was actually no signature on it in the first place. Uh -oh. I mean, it's just a computer printout. So all of these people, about how could there be a forged signature when there was no signature to, to begin with? So I think the whole problem was is that because there was no signature on the, the blood test, um, the, they wouldn't let me judge. So that's the long version of that story that I never want to talk about again. <laughs> um, XFL is not doing very well. No, uh, it's not. You, I'm still thinking about that signature. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it. Well, oh, and then the other thing, you know, they, they said that my eyes didn't dilate properly. And the problem with that was I never had my eyes dilated to do it properly or not because when uh, Dr. Richard Istrico, who gave me my medical exam, uh, goes, have you had your eyes dilated? And I said, no. And he goes, well, we may have to do it. Let me check. He checks and he goes, we don't have to do it. So anyway, that's huh. another story. Anyway, let me let me get back to the XFL. The um, I got a call from a, a sports writer in Chicago who's doing the story who told me that when the the, 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 the overnight rating for the, the game on Saturday night was a 2.8. And so the final number when it comes in tomorrow will probably be in the range of a 2.4 on NBC. And apparently they are checking records because it is believed to be the lowest rating in the history of any of the four major networks in history of television for prime time, <laughs> which is really scary. It was definitely the lowest rating... Last week's rating was was the lowest rated. Oh God, what was it? Maybe WBS can release a press release saying they've set a new network record. Just not say what the number was. Yeah, I think that last week's rating, which was the 3.1, and this one's going to come well below that. I believe that was the lowest rating in the history of the NBC network for prime time. So, so you know, when you read these like quotes, well, we're really not doing that bad, and they couldn't be doing worse. <laughs> <laughs> UPN, the UPN stations. Did you get more CNN yet? What CNN rating I won't get until uh, tomorrow. Okay. Um, but that's probably going to end up being like, you know, an 07 or something, 08. Um, the UPN rating will, the UPN overnight was a 18, so that's down 10% from last week, so that means it'll probably wind up about a 14. Uh, so as far as like making these numbers add up to 11, you know, let's not even try. And I don't want to hear anyone like trying to justify that these ratings aren't that bad because they're worse, they're worse than anyone could ever imagine. These are horrible numbers. Um, anyway, uh, what? I mean, I've, I've read some of these quotes going, well, you know, it's, you know, we really didn't expect much, and it's only the third week, and it's, a, you know, the numbers are dropping everywhere. And Vince said it'd be three years before they made a profit. That's my favorite. It, it, it ain't going to be three years. It's three not going to be here. years. They're not going to be here in three years. Um, NBC, you know, the NBC stations on the West Coast, they want, they want this thing gone. I think that the plan is that if, if the ratings don't go up to about a 4 to a 4.5 within three weeks, and at this trend, and they're going to be close to a negative 4, um, that the NBC stations are going to uh, move the shows to a three-hour tape delay to air them from 8 to 11 in prime time so they can save their 6 o'clock newscasts being at their regular time because that's a lucrative thing for the, the station. I know the station in Seattle and Portland, the uh, NBC affiliate of both pretty much told them, you know, you got three weeks, and no matter what the network says, we're doing it. The UPN affiliates are actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're actually more up in arms because they would, they want UPN to announce as quick as possible that they are not renewing for a second season, so they can go and uh, get, get programming to fill that time slot for next season. Yeah. Uh, do you UPN think that's is, um, a taped game? How do you think that would affect it? I, don't I mean, do you, do you think that like people, if you're a big enough football fan, actually watch the XFL? And you read that the game was bad, you just wouldn't watch it. 
I think it would hurt the range slightly. I don't think it would be a big difference. You know, I mean, how much more can you hurt? I mean, how much lower can a network rating go? I mean, pe- I, I remember some. I think we asked that like after the first, uh, second week. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, okay. This would have been a conversation I had with someone from NBC. Okay, a couple of days ago, and this was when I did a three-one, right? Mm-hmm. He said that their feeling was you could run a test pattern in prime time and draw a three-zero. Okay, which obviously now I think that that's being reevaluated. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the test pattern rating is about a 2-4. And anyway, you know, that's, that's just doing really bad. And that game on Saturday, they were in this pouring rainstorm in Chicago, which is certainly not their fault. But, you know, to, to, make, uh, to, to make that field, you know how the announcers have to be sitting there with the fans? Yeah. So you had Jim Ross and Jesse Ventura. It's like 20 degrees or whatever it was in Chicago. It's pouring rain. And they're just sitting there, just getting pelted with rain. And so Jesse can't bring notes. So Jesse has, like, no clue what's going on in this game without his notes, right? <laughs> I mean, Ross is, I guess, doing the best he can, you know, doing it. And then they're trying to do this angle with, with Jesse Ventura and Rusty Tillman, who's the coach of the New York team. And it, it just got so, it was, it was so Bush League, the way that whole thing went down. Anyway, I know that, I don't want to belabor that, uh, don't want to belabor that stuff. The, um, one other thing is, um, the, the planned, all the plans as far as WCW, you know, the, every week we talk about the plans. Eric Bischoff was on the show talking about the plans. Just suffice to say that all the plans as of this moment are out the window. There is no plan. There is there is an idea for a plan, but it, it, it could change, and I don't even want to bring it up. But but the plan from, you know, the, the plan that we had talked about where at the next pay-per-view they were going to bring everybody back and then set up the big pay-per-view in May. Um, well, obviously that's going to be changed to some degree because Booker T's coming back. And as far as with the other guys, uh, I think that that's probably all going to change as well. I don't know what the new, you know, um, you know, whatever it is. They're going to be running every Monday night in April. And as far as that goes, that's about as far as anything knows. There's, there's no, there will be no shutdown in April. That's for sure. Because they booked, uh, actually they haven't completely, completely booked, but they're, they're trying to book night shows for every Monday in April. May 6th in Vegas. And, uh, God, just one week ago, I was writing about how great it was for them to finally have a long-term plan and an idea, and now it's they've had four of those. Square the last one. Four, they've had four of those in the last four weeks because of all the pro, all the just various problems from from you know different situations. When I, uh, any other news to hit before I start hitting emails? No. Okay, let's go. This is uh, there's no question the XFL is collapsing week after week in the ratings by now. Who knows where the eventual dropping point will be? Will it hit a one rating? No, I can't go that low, but I shouldn't say that. Because you should not say that. I know. Nothing will surprise me. On XFL.com, they have an XFL survey with over 20 questions for the fans to fill out. It's interesting. I mean, they should fill out, how come you no longer watch? What are we missing? Why did you watch in the first place and choose never to come back? The ratings are obviously pathetic, but is the XFL making money? Okay, I, the answer to that question is, is a resounding no. He goes, the XFL supposed goals for the teams to average 20,000 tickets sold per game. I want to make a couple of notes about these tickets. What attendances that are being announced at these games, okay, is the number of tickets that are out. That is a combination of tickets sold and tickets comped. That does not even mean the number in the building. I mean, just in the Chicago game, they announced an attendance of 24,000 people at that Chicago game, but there were really only somewhere between 12 and 14,000 people in the building, and there were a lot of comps out in Los Angeles. They announced uh, 18,000, and they would not even announce, this was for yesterday's game, they would not even announce how many were in the building. Someone told me that it could have been as low as 7,000, and not. And there's a lot of comps in, Lo- in Los Angeles, Chicago had a lot of comps. I don't think San Francisco has had any comps at all, and they drew 34,000. San Francisco is, is doing very, very well. Um, anyway. Has the media the gone after the uh, tenants yet? Uh, they, in every story, they say announced crowd. Which but they really haven't, the like, because uh, I think the XFL was pretty much screwed either way, because, I mean, even if the rating was still like a 10 right now, uh, they'd be going after the attendance. 7,000 people, my God. Well, they haven't really, actually, they, they haven't really done that. The only thing that I saw... Well, they have the rating lo- to go after. Well, in the local paper today, they just said that they, they announced 18,000 tickets... Um, for the LA game, but then they said they would, but, the, but they refused to announce how many were actually in the building because mm-hmm. traditionally you do both numbers and they yeah. didn't do that. Uh, they go, they're supposed to average 20,000 tickets sold per game. I think they're on a pace to average well over that figure for the brainstorm games. They had 18,000 in each of those games. Again, um, um, well, I don't know, the Memphis game they announced 18,000. I mean, put it this way, those numbers 
be very skeptical of those numbers. Other than those, those are real numbers of tickets out, but that doesn't mean that those tickets are all paid, and doesn't mean that those number of people came to the buildings. Because in most cases, the number in the in the stadium is actually far less than the number that's announced. The Demons Outlaw game had 34,000, which in fact is a real number. At 25 bucks, the gate should be pretty good for those games. At 25 bucks, 35,000 fans at 750,000 dollar gate for tickets alone. I wonder if the, if everyone knew what the merchandising figures were doing, whether or not they're making money. Okay. Based on the idea that they would sell 20,000 tickets per game and average an 11.0 rating, okay, they were on line to lose $50 million this year, which would be $25 million for WWF. Or I think 60, actually $60 million. $30 million for WWF and, and $30 million for NBC. So since those TV numbers are nowhere close, and the attendance is going to end up being below that number or, 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 or close to that number, I mean, it's just, you know, even if the attendance stays at that number, the fact is, is it was, it's mainly the TV revenue was the, was the key revenue source. And they're going to, and they're going to do less than half of projection, so so the losses, um, if the losses were projected at sixty, they're probably going to be closer to eighty. So no, they're not making money. Is the short version of that answer? Uh, let's see. This is from Lamont Cranston. This is pretty good. This, this is the top ten ideas for resurrecting WCW. Here, uh, number one, dress Kevin Nash up as Doink and the entire cruiserweight division up as little dinks. Number two, Ric Flair versus Bruno San Martino feud. The winner's son, David, gets a push. Number three, bring back Kevin Sullivan to have an affair with Kimberly Page. Tell Dallas to make it a shoot. Four, Dwayne Gill versus Bill Goldberg. Winner keeps the gimmick. Five, replace Dean Malenko with the ultimate warrior with the gimmick of the man of a thousand holes. Uh, six, Randy Savage versus Ric Flair. The loser gets to keep Liz. The loser keeps Liz. Uh, I could have done better than that one. Seven, have Sarge come in and do squats and push-ups until he pukes, then make him start cutting promos. Now that would be that would be a gimmick. <laughs> That's a good one. Number eight, bring in Fabulous Moolah to wrestle Lance Storm to give Storm the rub. Number nine, this is the one that I like. Uh, sign John Cena and Big Show from the WWF. Have Show Cena steal Cena's food while he's busy in the ring wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Number ten, dress up in Amazon as China and Killer Kowalski do a run in, rip and rip her ear off and then run away. Okay. He'd always just get a new ear. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Uh. Do um. Let me see about this. Uh. Vince McMahon, Trish Stratus versus William Regal and Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, I know about that match. Uh, let's see. There is a link to Wrestling Observer Live on www. something. D. That's steelcage.com. Okay. Um, this is, uh, don't get me wrong. I know Helmsley was awesome, was awesome last night, but you got to give it for Austin putting on that kind of performance after everything he's gone through physically at the age of 36. Yeah, absolutely. It takes two to have a match like that. Mm -hmm. Austin, Austin did a great job. Uh, let me see. Did you catch? Steve Austin get blasted in the head by a beer can thrown by a fan shortly, shortly after they raised the cage after the third fall. Helmsley was still on top of him, and needless to say, Austin stopped selling the knockout after getting hit with the beer can. I didn't notice that. Did you notice that? I didn't either. Wow. I, I, I mean, I saw he kind of shoved him off because he couldn't breathe. Here's a 250-pound man who's feeling it like he's dead, lying on your chest after a match like that. I'd have pushed him off immediately. I didn't like that stunner, by the way, after the match. Oh, I know. That was dumb. Why do it? Uh, um, I mean, I know why they did it, you know, just because they thought it was going to get a big pop and it didn't. But it's like after 40 minutes, to me, when the match is over, that kind of a match, they should just both collapse and and be dragged out of the building. I mean, oh, I the mean, ring. they did. I, th I thought it was awesome how after the match, you just both just they just laid there and they raised the cage up, and these two guys just laid there like they had absolutely nothing left in their bodies. And I thought this is making this match even better. This post match right here, and the next thing you know, here's Austin giving a stun, and I thought, well, so much for that. Yeah. At least he collapsed afterwards and didn't go drink beer. Why does someone have to take a blood test and be away and to be a judge for the UFC? It's not UFC rules, it's New Jersey State Athletic Commission rules. They never made me do it before. Um, just uh, it's from Frank Jewett. Uh, when Vince McMahon announced plans to start a football league, there was a lot of snickering from the mainstream press. Wrestling journalists and fans quickly jumped to Vince's defense, claiming he was being unfairly criticized because of his connection to pro wrestling. Um, he was, to an extent, okay? Setting aside the pyro cheerleader promos and other pro wrestling trappings, including Jim Ross popping for an eight-yard run, the XFL still works like a pro wrestling company. The XFL claimed an attendance of 24,000 in Chicago, but the AP reported less than 15,000 people were there. The XFL claimed 18,000 in Los Angeles. The LA Times estimated there were less than 8,000 in the building. We just talked about that. 
Overstating attendance certainly is a new concept in pro sports, but by choosing this path, McMahon has proven his critics right. He's reverted from meaty impresario to carnival huckster. Uh, and then you go, at least Vince didn't invent a terrorist scare at the uh, at the Coliseum this time. You know, the season's um, not over yet. Um, that's right. Uh, the the thing is, is, is like I said, the number that they announce for attendance, I told you what it is, so they're not lying, but they are misleading. Um, so anyway, but there they announce the total number of tickets out. That doesn't mean, okay. Anyway, see, this is WCW, da, 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 Dustin Rhodes, Jeff Jarrett with Ric Flair as referee, yeah. Shane Helms against Shannon Moore, uh, brackets for the Cruiserweight Tournament, oh, I hope they get one. Okay, it's for ECW Super 8. I went to the Super 8 uh, Saturday night, which um, Loki won that, right? Yeah, I think so. All I can say is, wow, the work rate was superb. Guys like Tony Kazina, Mike Sullivan, Billy Fives, and Jason Rain were all pretty good. Now, I had heard some of those guys were not that good. Uh, Mike Sullivan is, but anyway. Uh, Rain's finisher, the raindrop is amazing. Spanky, Reckless Youth, American Dragon, and Loki were excellent. I heard American Dragon was the star of the show. Mm -hmm. Too bad this event couldn't be shown to more people. The American Dragon, Reckless Youth, Loki against Billy Fives, American Dragon versus Spanky, Loki versus Jason Rain were all amazing matches. Loki does a sadistic corkscrew flip from outside from the top turnbuckle. American Dragon used a dragon suplex, which he floats into a full Nelson like hold for and bridges for submission. It's amazing. Okay. Uh, this is. I read the following on several websites. Well, it started in the torch, so we'll at least give credit to the right the person who started this one. The word started. Some wrestlers believe Steve Austin is working behind the scenes for a mid-card wrestlers from moving into the main event mix. Wrestlers say Austin believes he can make more money working with wrestlers who already been established as main event wrestlers, as opposed to elevating, helping elevate mid-carders. Some also believe Austin thinks uh, he is more likely to lose his spot to a younger wrestler than he is to one of the current uh, main eventers. Uh, other mid-card wrestlers believe Austin Triple H working together to have Kurt Angle demoted to mid-card. Oh, come on now. <laughs> In recent weeks, Triple H made known that he feels Angle's title reign lasted too long. Um, there is stuff going on there. I know that uh, some of the mid-carders believe that their biggest allies among the top guys are Austin and Undertaker. I think there is definite um, leeriness of Triple H more now than ever before, uh, by the obvious people, for the obvious reasons, especially since Chris Jericho got yelled at uh, for cutting a promo on X-Pac that everyone thought was something that he shouldn't have been yelled at for. So there's stuff going on there. You know, it's, you know. Uh, Where did he cut his promo? Uh, I, was on, um, I think it was the week that X-Pac finally showed up. It was, it was about two or three weeks ago on Raw. I think it was on Raw. I don't, think, I don't remember if it was Raw or SmackDown, but I think it was Raw. What did he say? Oh, the same oh, look, same everything? Yeah, yeah, that one. Well, it's true. I know. Well, that's probably why. If it wasn't true, I think that everyone would have a sense of humor about it. Uh, this is from Neil. Whatever happened to Lord Al Hayes? Uh, Lord Al Hayes was at the Cauliflower Alley, and his knees are doing very, very poorly. In fact, he needs a, a wheelchair and a cane to get around, unfortunately. Uh, so that's what happened to Lord Al Hayes. Uh, let's see. I agree. The last two shows were great with bad news, and especially the brain. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, what are the chances of getting the following wrestling personalities on the show soon? Jim Mitchell, we just had him on. Could get him on again. Dave McClain, we asked for, didn't get before that pay per view. Raven, I'm um, sure would do the show, except for a company that does not allow him to do the show. Um, and Jim Cornette will be on the show. I what day? What day, Al? Next Monday. Cornette. Next, Next Monday, Monday will be Jim Cornette. Cornette. Good. And we could talk about uh, a lot of those guys in Ohio Valley and what's been going on there. Uh, I thought you might find this interesting. On Bad News Show, Bad News mentioned, that's right, that he, that he did not know Sakuraba, but on December 5th, 1993, in front of 46,000 people, I was supposed to be at that show, but I had appendicitis and didn't make it. Uh, Bad News Allen beat Sakuraba. On the, that was the undercard of the first Takata Bader match. That's right, that was Sakuraba uh, seven years ago. Uh, let's see, with The Rock being so young and being the six-time champion, do you think it's fair to say he will come closer past Ric Flair's championship record by the end of his career, or is the Ric Flair thing an accomplishment nobody will ever do again? Uh, he'll do it, unless he, unless he gets hurt. Yeah. It's so much less of an accomplishment today, though. I mean, just look at Hunter. Five reigns, or what is it, four reigns already? Uh, in less so. than two Rock, years? Rock. Yeah, and just yeah, a year and a half. Yeah. August of 99, right? Wasn't that when he first won it? Yep. Yeah, so it, it's, you know, Rocks broke the record uh, held by Bret Hart and, um, and uh, Hogan with the sixth reign that he won last night. And, I mean, to me, it was not... I thought they would mention that one for sure. Maybe they will today, but... Rock it's, just it's, outdid both Bret Hart and Hulk Hogan. Yeah, maybe they don't want to mention Bret Hart. And then again, uh, let's see. Uh, which, well, let's, let's start, go to the phones. We'll go to Matt from WrestlingPlanet.com. Matt, what's going on? 
Hello? Hello? Hey. Hello. What's up? That's uh, this is uh, Matt Boone from WrestlingPlanet.com. Mm-hmm. Yes. The, show, the site that's carrying your show. Yes. I just wanted to correct that because you said WrestlePlanet earlier. I just wanted to know um, what's going on. What do you think about Triple H? And since he beat Austin, do you think he's going to like complain and try to get to the main event at WrestleMania? Oh, he was going to whether he won or lost, but <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to try to get in the Yeah, of course he's going to complain. I'm just saying, you know, I figured he'd use that, you know. Well, he's going to use that. Like, why is Austin in the main event if I'm the one who just won? And, I think that that will be an angle both behind the scenes. I think that he'll say it on television in an interview tonight as well. I think it'll be an interview for tele- I mean, an angle for television and an angle to get himself in the match for real. I think yeah. It's, it's a dual thing. Anything else? No, uh, that's about it. Okay, good thank enough. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And let's see. Who do you think are the top three wrestlers in the WWF? As far as in the ring, uh, Benoit, Helmsley, and Angle. Would you say that, Brian, or... I mean, Eddie Guerrero so. prob- I mean, you can say Eddie Guerrero... Eddie last night was way up there. He was awesome. Yeah. Him and Benoit yeah, was, together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think they're doing a program with those two to get Benoit babyface. That was I think, awesome. I think that's what they're going to start doing. Hey, how many times... Right? I can't even remember. Did they done Rock Austin twice at WrestleMania or just once? Rock Austin... I think just... No, no, just once. Yeah, just once. The, that's right. WrestleMania in, uh, would be 99? Yeah. I'm just looking back, like, the WWF, they don't really like to do the same ama- same main event for WrestleMania more than once. I mean, that's why I kind of think that uh, Hunter's going to get in there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's been two years, but they held off doing the Rock Austin single match for so long, they might as well do it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Whatever happened to Sting's career? He used to be the franchise, and he hasn't been used correctly. I think what happened to Sting is, is that... Um, Sting. His thing. He didn't perform when he he was given the greatest build up in the world, and he was probably the most popular wrestler in the entire business. Um, at one point, it was it three years ago or so? And then he came down from the ceiling and he wrestled Hogan, and Hogan is the smartest man in wrestling, or was at that time. I think Hunter's got him now, because uh, because Hogan's sitting on the sidelines and Hunter's having four and three quarter star matches. You know why else I think that uh, <laughs> Hunter and Nash both are smarter than Hogan right now? It's because no matter what they do. Guys, for the most part, still love them. I know guys who see through both of them. They just don't say it publicly. I mean, I'm, I'm both. I hear the same stuff we from, from almost every almost everyone I talk to. But nobody's going to say it on the air because they know that it's not in your best interest to, uh, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to make those enemies. Um, and you know, but I mean, how many guys that we had on this show that when they, when that name Hogan comes up? And all of a sudden they say, you know, just what a great guy he is and blah, blah, blah. And you know, like, 80% of them, you know what I mean? I mean, I know. Yeah. I, I, 60% of them I know for sure. The other 20% I'm not sure. You know what I mean? So it's, you know, you politically, you know, I mean, what? How many people have been on the show and just gone, you know, like, you know, said the things about Vince that, like, you and I say? You know, I think the only one's bad news, Allen, because he knows he's never going back. Mm-hmm. And, and Bret Hart. And Bret Hart. Because <laughs> he's not going back either anytime soon. In his mind, ever. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was the big show doing running in? Yeah, I just think, you know, uh, just trying to set something up. Uh, let's go to JD in Pittsburgh. What's going on? Hey, Dave. Hey, Brian. How are you guys doing? Hey. I just got a trial of Figure Four Weekly, and I have to say it's a pretty good thing that I got it. I really enjoyed it. Um, my question is, as far as three ECW guys, there was talk they might be debuting tonight at Raw in Phoenix. I was wondering if you guys heard any about them. Lynn, Rhino to Jerry, and uh, if so, what do you okay, guys Rhino, think? R- Rhino may debut tonight, I and mean, Rhino's going to be there, and he'll at least work a dark match. Uh, he may appear on Raw. Mm-hmm. So Jerry is not there, and who's the third guy you were asking about? Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn's not there either. Yeah. But, uh, and um, there were no plans. There were no plans for... To Jerry's contract has not been fully executed, although it has been signed. Mm-hmm. Whatever that means, I don't know. Uh, Lynn, Lynn, everything's taken care of. It's just this week he's just not there. Now, they may... Um, who's that? I think they may, they may just see Bradley tomorrow night at SmackDown or tonight. That's a possibility as well, but but of of those three, only Rhino would be would be a possibility, mm-hmm. and I think it's a. Yeah, it's at, at, at one point the plan. I don't know what the plan is, but at one point the plan was for Rhino to debut on TV either tonight or tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What do you guys see him as far as the angle goes? I mean, I'm just reading on this line this week. There's a lot of talk Rhino might join right to censor. Jerry Lynn might do a Mr. Minnesota gimmick. Jerry and Jerry might do a kind join kind type knocking and essay real. Uh, oh, great! Okay. I don't think they have plans for anybody actually. Yeah. Maybe Rhino, obviously, be a good debut tonight, but... Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you think um, there's a lot of, I mean, as far as the WWF goes, I mean, I mentioned this to a couple of guys also, I mean, the way the WWF has their talent now, I mean, getting the ECW guys, of course, Bjork and Matthews, the addition now as well, they're going to have to let a lot of guys like, uh, um, say, S.A. Rios and D'Lo Brown, all those guys go pretty much. I mean, the way D'Lo has been they pushing. Don't, okay, okay, okay. They don't have to do anything. Yeah. I mean, the company, even with his XFL losses, the company mm-hmm. still... Uh, made, what was it, $11 million last quarter. So it's not like these contracts are bleeding them dry. They don't have to do anything. Now, they may choose to because there are just so many guys that you can put to work and there's no point in having guys you can't. And yeah. Those guys you mentioned, you know, are certainly on the bubble. They don't get a push. So yeah, especially deal it's, on it's, it's, it's certainly a possibility. Yeah. Um, I would think, you know, you know, I, you know, one of the things that they're doing, whether they say it or not, is they're trying to stockpile talent so WCW doesn't have young guys mm-hmm. turn around. And, you know, S.A. Rios is a hell of a worker. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that they would want WWE to get him. And D.O. Brown can be a good worker. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if they want WCW to get him either. Well, so, but, but, well Dino you know. was talking to WCW at one point, and then, I mean, after that happened, his push went way down. Yes, it did. Yes, and uh, speaking of WCW, now that we're going to mention them, uh, as far as the Steiner brothers go, I mean, Rick and Scott, we've seen them totally out of control. I mean, do you think right now it's pretty much a definite that both of them are way, way out of control in their matches? I mean, look what Rick, Not Rick Scott. did this week. I mean, what Not Rick Scott. did the last, Scott. last week, that was insane. Um, uh, Rick, 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 is, Rick is not out of control, but he is dangerous because he's been out of control. Scotty. No, Scott's yeah, I don't, I don't Scott. see. I don't see Scott, like, just... You know, it's almost like you see Rick in there, and he'll get a guy that he really doesn't have a lot of respect for. Yeah. And he'll just, I mean, it's not like he's going to really try and hurt him or he's shooting on him, but he's just beat. But he does hurt him. Yeah, yeah. and he did that to Lash LaRue last week. Yeah. Case in point. And then Scotty, I mean, he's taken out his more than his fair share. I mean, I'm surprised. Scott, Scott hasn't more... been, I mean, to me, the only stuff that Scott's been out of control was a couple times when he does those interviews and he says things without... You know, that he, you know, when he goes against the script on interviews, yeah. Well, he deliberately tried to injure, from what I look, saw, Modest and Daniels in that match. No, 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 no. That was 100% angle. He oh. didn't try to hurt them at all. Okay. No, no. Because I thought a lot of people said that happened, for real, because it looked like their legs just snapped. No, no, that was 100%. Okay. Angle. No. But, yeah, Scotty, there's no doubt about it. Sometimes in his interviews, I'll agree with you there, Dave, he is out of control. And uh, you said Booker's coming back tonight? Possible? Uh, that was, I, I believe so, yes. Well, they better get some ratings, because they need help bad. Uh, last week's ratings were not a good sign. This is what WF.com has to say about Raw tonight. Um, there's going to be interviews with Stone Cold and The Rock and Kurt Angle and Triple H. <laughs> and one match. <laughs> yeah, right, for, for 90 minutes. we got the tag team match of Vince, Vincent Mann and uh, Trish against Steve Regal and Stephanie. Chris Benoit, or Chris Jericho, defends the Intercontinental title against Raven. Dudley's tag team title against Haku and Rikishi. Lita against Molly Holly. Winner becomes number one contender for Ivory. I can see Lita beating Ivory at WrestleMania for the women's title. That's sort of a WrestleMania type thing that they would do. Mm-hmm. And Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero against X-Pac and Justin Incredible. Okay, now there is going to be a swerve in either that match or the McMahon match. I'm trying to figure out what, what swerve do you think they're going to do in the McMahon match. Everyone's turned on someone. I think if they turn anybody, they'll turn like uh, maybe Trish Babyface. I just kind of had that impression last night because she kind of got screwed and then she was like totally pissed off after the match and there was just something about it I was looking at going, she's kind of a baby face here. You know, there was a lot of uh, people in the WWF that were surprised last night that Triple H didn't get booed more. And actually, I know why, because he never backs down. Of course, he's a baby face. I know. He's a badass baby face, just hates that people. Was like, which is exactly how Steve Austin got over. Yeah. The Rock. Yep. Anyway. The most exciting fight I think Pride could do is Gilbert Ivell against Pele. So that's the size thing, okay? Gilbert Ivell is about a 230 pound guy and Pele is, um, about a 170 pound guy. So it would not be a good fight. In fact, it'd be a, <laughs> be an ugly fight. Brutal. Um, although, although, style wise, I mean, I've seen Pele, who's not the famous soccer player, but he's a Brazilian fighter. Pele, I've seen him in, in tremendous fights. That'd be a hell of a fight, fight too, the soccer player Pele. Against who? I don't know. <laughs> you got yourself in a corner on that one. You didn't get out of it. No, it's just... Um, let's Scott Steiner. No, uh, <laughs> that would really be ugly, too. Hey, I got one more comment about Scott Steiner, um, kind of from our last call there. Um, Scott Steiner, I remember looking at him going into the ring and thinking he's going to go in there and actually hurt somebody. But the one thing is, he's so crazy strong, and he's so used to throwing these guys like Hugh Morris with his suplexes, that when he got in there with those four cruiserweights and he was throwing those guys around, I was scared for him. Especially hey, Yang when he just tossed him off the top rope. 
So you know, guys are under 200 pounds, and this is a guy that's used to throwing guys that are over 300, and uh, it was scary. You know, want to see some, someone someone who's scary like that is Brock Lesnar in Ohio Valley, because Brock Lesnar, you know, who's just a couple of months out of uh, the NCAA's, is used to throwing around 260 pound guys who don't want to be that's thrown. For real. Okay, so when he's in there with 200 pound guys that want to be thrown, they're like they go into orbit, and I mean, uh, <laughs> are they gonna like pull flips off a German? Uh, a double arm, double arm suplex, and some guys run it all the way over. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. It was like the first move I think I ever saw Brock Lesnar do, and it was like, wow, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he he still got a ways to go, but boy, he's he's he's. You look at him, and you know, he may not be able to to punch, and he might not be able to good in a fight, but if I ever wanted to intimidate someone, I'd bring him. <laughs> 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 oh my God, what a what a huge huge powerful looking guy. Uh, let's see. Um, wondering if there's any more developments with uh, Tanaka, Ghetto, and Jado. Uh, nothing new other than they're out of FMW over, I guess, over financial reasons. Uh, who stands to lose the So most? that is real? Yeah, yeah, that's not an As far as I know, that's not an angle. Okay. Uh, everyone's doing it in the Naj Khan thing. I was told that's not an angle, too. It's like, this is happening with too much frequency. And I'm skeptical of everything over there because it's over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I believe that's not an angle. Uh, let's see. Who stands to lose... Actually, I don't even want to say I believe anything because FMW, I shouldn't. FMW, you can't believe anything. They <laughs> See, the the thing with New Japan, way. though, is they can get rid of some of these guys, do the interpromotional feud later, and make some money. But for like a smaller company, I mean, say it was like ECW getting rid of half their guys so they could do an interpromotional angle later, they couldn't do that. No, yeah, because they need to make money all the time. Right, for New Japan, I mean, this whole thing, it's like, you know, a lot of people are mentioning, you know, New Japan's business is down, and it is. And, 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 it, and it, in some cases, you know, I mean, it's, I'm not trying to paint a rosy picture of New Japan, but at the same time, they are setting up, you know, matches for six months and a year from now, and sacrificing, you know, like having guys on the card right now. I mean, there's a bit, there's, there's a long-term business plan in what they're doing, um, as opposed to like a smaller group that could not afford for business to be down on per, almost on purpose, if you know what I'm saying. Because like, yeah. look at this tour, tour they got coming up. I mean, they have no, no uh, Chono. Uh, obviously, no Hashimoto, no Takeiwa, no Otani. I mean, you know, so, you know, you know I mean, they know it's not going to be a good tour, but again, it's, you know, there's there's reasons they're doing all of those, you know, guys to give them a rest and, and, and to shoot angles. Uh, who stands to lose the most in the XFL, and do you think they will finish the season? I think they will finish the season. Um, um, who loses the most? Who do you think loses the most? NBC or Vince? Vince. Money-wise, money, money they're going to lose the exact same amount. Because NBC is just going to, you know, they'll put a new show in there and they'll recoup and they'll forget all about it, but Vince will be affected forever. Yeah, because it'll be the story, it'll be the big story of Vince. Yep. Because he made, he made it the big story. You know, I mean, one of the things that people have been mentioning lately is that, that one of the reasons, because I'm going like, you know, the press has been so hard on him and all that, and I've talked to some press people and they go, the reason is because Vince shot his mouth off like he did and made himself a story before the league started, and you got to follow up. Yeah. So, um, okay, let's see. There's another one. After reading the financial figures for the XFL, I was wondering how this will directly affect the WWF, whether it be payroll or stock price. Well, I don't even want to think about stock price, but it shouldn't help it. That's for sure. These ratings should, should be hurting the stock. How long will Vince stick with the XFL? I mean, I, I really don't think he's going to do it next year. I really don't. He says he will, but I don't think he will. Um, and how much would it cost to shut it down? It costs, you know, less to shut it down than to keep it going. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Did Bobby Heenan have a brother who was a pro wrestler? No, he did not. Uh, there was a wrestler who wrestled under the name Jerry Heenan, whose real name was Jerry Hill. They were not real brothers, who later became uh, more famous under the name Guy the Stomper Mitchell and um, Gentleman Jerry Valiant as well. Uh, a couple of people sent emails noting that about Austin and the beer can. Uh, this is from Doug Creamer, several of these. Uh, watch the tape. At the end of the match, Austin gets hit square in the head by a beer can. Helmsley moved off him in a hurry. We were on the tape and watched it again. He got nailed. So, he got nailed. Let's go to Aziz. Aziz, what's going on? Hey. hey. Um, I just want to ask, do uh, you have any updates on the Shawn Michaels WrestleMania situation? Uh, he's going to be on the card, but he's not going to wrestle on the card, and I don't know what they're going to do with him um, on the card. But uh, he should be on TV uh, God, I would say within two, three weeks, starting to build it up, I would think. Well, I was he sure. back there at No Way Out last night? No, he was not. He was not there last night. He wasn't? And he was he was not planned to be for a TV tonight. Um, you know, I mean, he doesn't live that far. 
I mean, if they decided, like, you know, right now, if they, they all of a sudden they want him, he could actually get there on time. But but I'm pretty sure he won't be at CB tonight or tomorrow. Uh, was Tori backstage at No Way Out last night? Tori as in Terry Polk? Uh, Tori as in Tori Wilson? Tori, um, Tori from... Former yeah. DX Tori? Yeah, DX Tori. She's Ninja Girl. She, she is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was definitely backstage. She did a run-in in the, um, was it which, in the uh, battle, uh, Hardcore Battle Royal. You know when they'll uh, really, uh, reveal her as uh, Ninja Girl? No. I think no, they'll no, do it no. tonight. I thought they were going to do it last night. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, um, can I make a shout-out? Sure. Uh, shout-out to Fred Cook. And, uh, I want everyone to visit iowrestling.com. Okay. All right. We can't be doing this any, any longer, by the way. What was that? <laughs> Uh, everyone plugging websites. It's just, it's just yes, you must idea. link to our show or we will not give you a plug from this point forward. Okay, we're going to just, no more shout outs to, to get for plugs. Let's go to Weston, Virginia. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey. It's going really good, Wes. I want to ask you, how difficult do you think it's going to be getting over Ben Wan to face? I've just always had the, you know, the image of him being a heel and just the way he kind of carries himself and, you know, the way he conducts his promos. He seems like he's always been more of a heel. I think it's going to be, a little bit difficult getting him over as a face, would you think? I don't think so. I, I mean, mean, when he was in really... WCW, I mean, he just had to do, I mean, he was a baby face. It was pretty easy. He, he did pretty well as a baby face. He's a hard face worker, there, good matches. People want to cheer him. Uh, no, knows how to sell and make comebacks. I mean, the one weakness of him as a baby face is the promos, for sure, but, you know, um, you know, that's, I don't know. Also, I uh, saw on uh, OneWrestling.com, they said that in, uh, Mike Muniam's comments about Eric Bischoff sent Arn Anderson home. Uh, something to do with like Buff Bagwell and Lex Luger. He was involved in some uh, match or a promo, and they went against the script, and he got blamed for it. Have you heard anything about that? I heard he was sent home, and I made a few calls last night, but because of the pay per view, I couldn't. I I just don't know why he was sent home, but yeah, I did hear. I did hear that he was sent home. Yeah. Hmm. Um. I'm sure that that's. I'm sure that that was probably the reason. You know. Um, but I, I just didn't. I just haven't heard anything further. Also, any talk about uh, Terry Taylor getting diminished in booking power? I've heard in a couple of places, but I don't put a lot of credence. But is any truth to it, that? It's 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 all speculation. But anyone who's in power right now, um, I would think, could be very nervous because Eric Bischoff, I believe, is going to bring in his 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 own crew. I think he wants to bring in. Um, as many of his own wrestlers and certainly his own production crew and his own uh, booking crew as much as he can. I think he wants his team, he wants it to be his team as opposed to this team that was not a successful team. Yeah. So, so. Plus, he wants the loyalty. Know. And he wants the loyalty, exactly. Because, you know, the worst thing that can happen is you get all these guys. I mean, I think that he knows it from what happened to him. He wants a team that's not going to backstab him, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, I mean, because. You know, he got he got demoted like September of '99, and and granted, it probably was the right thing at the time. Although they didn't do much better without him, but but um, they actually did <laughs> Looking worse. Looking back at the no, but Russo it, era, no, but it still was, it still was. No, I mean they just made the wrong call with Russo. That was that yeah. was the big problem. Because you know, we both know at that time that this thing could have been turned around September '99, no problem, <laughs> no problem. Um, and then they did everything wrong. And what are you gonna do? Anything else, Wes? Yeah, also. <laughs> I uh, also wanted to ask you about uh, in regards to Kevin Nash's contract. Doesn't that go off this year? Um, is it like 13 more months? I don't. I haven't been keeping up. Yeah. Uh, you remember? How much longer, Scott? How much Kevin Nash has? Yeah. God, he had the exact date on a night for a little while ago, and I forget what it was. It was like yeah. a year and six months or something. Yeah, I think it's 13 to 16 months, somewhere in that range. Yeah. So. Also, my last question, I've heard some rumors about uh, they're going to bring up, which is, you know, it's not a shock concerning who's involved, but the Diamond Dallas Page Steiner to, you know, get the angle over what happened backstage some time back. I think Page is going to talk about it tonight. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I would think that they would. Yeah, well, he's going to have to talk about it. No, no, wait a minute. I think they're doing one of those promos tonight where Page is going to talk about everything. Yeah, like okay. Shane Douglas is, I guess, on Thunder. So. Okay, yeah. but you know, the problem with this is, the problem with this is, this story is, okay, he's going to have to embellish that story, because the true story is not a good story for Paige. I mean, if, if it was, if it was, Scott Steiner was the baby face and Paige was the heel, that's okay, but to go in there and go, 
you know, he said this stuff about me, and it wasn't scripted, and I went down there to kick his ass, and, and he I was me. taken down in 10 seconds, and I was about to be killed, and they couldn't pull him off me, and I could do absolutely nothing to save myself. I don't think that that's going to help sell tickets. No, I, I think what people. it's going to be is like he's going to talk about the whole thing, how it started with Kimberly and everything like that. I don't okay. think they're going to address the uh, incident. Okay. Well, then uh, he should. But knowing Bischoff. Well, you can't, you, you know, hopefully they're smart enough to know that the baby face cannot go in there and go, I went in there and he kicked my ass without any problem. So pay to see me get beat up again on the next pay-per-view. Anything else? That's all I got, guys. Appreciate the comments. Did we have a fire alarm go off in the last segment? Um, I think it was uh, Wes's fire alarm. Okay, I thought it was mine. It wasn't. I went to the commercial mine. and the house was on a fire, so I was wondering if I was going crazy. It was yours? No, it wasn't. Okay, it wasn't mine. I know that for sure. I'll blame Wes. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was Wes's. Uh, let's see. I think. Uh, what do you think of Shawn Michaels as referee and as a three-way in, at WrestleMania? I got. I don't want Shawn Michaels as referee. I want them to do like a match. Just because of the like, shorts or for other reasons? I just want Shawn Michaels to referee. You know, the semi-main event. I want Rock and Austin to just be mat mono e mono, and just let him do it because it's a guaranteed winner, and you don't need to gimmick it up. And they should be able to have a great match. You remember, when, not... um, remember when Michaels was at that show probably about six months ago? I can't remember what it was, but he was going to referee or something, and Hunter just looks over and goes, you're not going to wear those shorts, are you? Now, I cracked up when he said Isn't that. Isn't that the equivalent of Chris Jericho saying that x Pac came back with the same greasy hair, um, the same tights, same everything? I think it is. Uh, yes, but... I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Uh, how come nobody found it disturbing that the mock funeral last week began with Kevin Nash's photo with the date February 18, 2001 as his death date? February 18th was the death date for both Kerry Von Erich in 1993 and Eddie Gilbert in 1995. I'm sorry, it really bothered me to see WCW's February 18th as Nash's death day when Kerry Von Erich and Eddie Gilbert died on that day. I I'm sure they, they had, had no clue. I'm sure they had no clue. If there was any problem, it was because Dale Earnhardt's death day was February 17th. Um, but no, I... I I, it's, I think it's something that uh, it just popped up in nobody's head. Uh, oh, the day of the pay-per-view, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the day of the pay-per-view. Yeah, that's why I got that date. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they've done plenty of things that um, have exhibited total cluelessness, so I would not be surprised if they didn't have I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even call that cluelessness. It's just, you know, where are you going to re remember that off the top of your head? Yeah. I mean, who's going who's gonna to remember that? I didn't rem if I didn't remember it, I can't blame them for not remembering it. Uh, what did you think of Kurt Angle's blatant cursing during last night's main event? <laughs> I was su really surprised at that, by the way. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, I think they've done an awesome job with him Thursday and Sunday. It's just too bad that it took so long. They did a great job with him, and he, you know, in the announcing and everything. I mean, yeah. They really tried to put him over as a big time player. Um, you said the WF doesn't like to do the same match two years in a row at WrestleMania. It seems to me, this is from Greg in Canada, that Vince has been trying to do that. Many times it just never works out. Brett and Sean were supposed to do it two years in a row, but they didn't. That's true. Brett and Austin um, were supposed to do it two years in a row. Uh, yeah, sort of. I mean, there was a there was, definitely was a plan for that WrestleMania 14 to be Brett and Austin, um, where Brett would lose to Austin. That was a plan, you know, um, but it didn't happen. And then Rock and Austin at WrestleMania 15, they wanted uh, Rock and Austin for WrestleMania 16, but he got hurt. That's right. So he's been trying to do it every year. He just never has. I guess so. Well, he'll do it this year, hopefully. Yeah. Does WF or WCW have any interest in Sabu, Rob Van Dam, or Psychosis? I don't think anyone has any interest in Sabu or Psychosis. Uh, I think that Rob Van Dam, there may be interest in WCW. Maybe. Um, depending on his asking price. Uh, let's see. Didn't Scott Steiner break Burker T's sternum? I think he bruised. Was it broken or bruised? I don't think it was broken or cracked or anything like that. That's what we first thought, but I think it turned out right, it was just it. like bruised or something. Um, let's see. The XFL has me excited because we finally have a ratings war. It appears that Nitro this week has a great shot at beating the NBC rating. Uh, pretty Think close. about that. Last year, the WWF said they would have 100,000 people at the Astrodome, but now I'm hearing 60,000. Why is this? Are ticket sales down? No. The building holds like 65. It's going to be sold out. They got 62 sold already. I think um, 100,000 last year they were going to do the deal where they counted the 30,000 people at the Access Festival over the weekend and yes. added that to the uh, 65,000 to come up with that number. Right. That is That, it, that was the plan. Uh, does ECW ever plan on having their television show back on in New York? I don't know if ECW even exists <laughs> to have a television show. Uh, let's see. 
on their radio show minutes ago, actually this is more than minutes ago because this email was sent hours ago, so hours ago, Opie and Anthony were, were discussing their recently canceled XFL pregame show. Uh, you know about that? Is that the station that refuses to talk about XFL now? No, 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 no. Opie and Anthony are New York guys. They do. Uh, they were doing a pregame show that was going to be picked up in New, in New York in several markets before the XFL game on Saturday night, and it got canceled. I think a week ago because, as bad as the ratings for the XFL game were, obviously the pregame show ratings were even worse. Hmm. So it got canceled. So anyway, they said that Vince McMahon has offered to be interviewed by Phil Mushnick many times, but Mushnick is too much of a pussy to do it. Yeah. That's a nice way of, yeah, that's a good way of saying things. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Vince McMahon has okay. Vince McMahon has offered to meet with Phil Mushnick, and Phil Mushnick has said no. At the same time, there was a TV show where they were supposed to be on together, and Vince McMahon pulled that little swerve uh, about two years ago. So, um, which would tend to believe that it was Vince, Vince McMahon was the one who kind of pussied out of that confrontation. So, you know, call names on both of them, but they're probably unfair on both sides. Well, no, that's not unfair on Vince's side. Not unfair to call Vince's name on that one. No way. I mean, that that was. You know, you go on there and you say he doesn't have enough guts to be here when he's he right there on the out. line, and you and you and you said and, and you tell him that I'm walking out if you if you put him on the show. Yeah, what, what what kind of crap? That's that's crap. <laughs> anyway.